Let's talk about shocks. Not this kind of shock though. This kind of shock. The rear shock on the mongoose ledge. If you're playing catch up, here's the short of it. This is the factory shock. 165 millimeters. Eye to eye. Goes right here. I replaced this shock in my stage one project bike status build with this. A DNM air shock, also 165 millimeters eye to eye. Oddly enough, a little bit lighter than this shock, but it worked a lot better. Really made the bike smooth. And I went from this into stage two with this. Another DNM shock, this time an air shock. Lots more control, adjustment. Very, very smooth. A huge improvement. Also 165 eye to eye 165 millimeters and in my stage 2 build I talked about how with this 165 millimeter eye to eye shock that has 35 millimeters of travel or shock stroke that that in conjunction with the way all this moves this pivot system it's going to move 35 millimeters here equals 90 to 100 millimeters at the back my best guesstimation based on pseudoscience which is the only science I'm good at the question is, can I go with the bigger shock here? There is some extra room on this pivot system, but changing the shock and changing this pivot changes the bike's geometry and can kind of bow it up in the middle. So we're gonna see what that does. As I put this on, this is another shock, another DNM. This time, this is an AOI 36RC, a very popular shock. Also used one just like this on Project XR. It's been going for a few years now. This new one, 190 millimeters it's an AO 42 AR 190 and it's the damp 2 system this is a damp 3 I don't know if that makes this one better but this is a newer model so we'll see but I'm gonna try to put this on but before I do that I need to get this shock off there we go removed now I can use my pivot system to start gauging and how I'm gonna do this here we go give you an idea as the shock compresses this pivot system moves and lifts the rear wheel as it decompresses the rear wheel drops the shock decompresses springs this pivot system up and by the way all of these actual bearings in this pivot system all working perfectly well nothing has come loose so far so good with this but what I'm gonna do right now it's just like last time I'm gonna measure 190 millimeters eye to eye I'm gonna jab a sharpie in this dropout I'm gonna put something behind it and I'm gonna compress this the 48 millimeters that this new shock will compress this is 190 millimeters instead of the 165 and instead of 35 millimeters of travel it has 48 so we'll try 48 millimeters of compression and see how much more travel that gets me at the rear. Okay, the first thing I see as a potential problem, this is a lot more travel than 165. I mean, 165 to 190 is more, but as you can see, this is tilted up quite a bit more. And just look at this. This shock, 165 versus 190. I mean, that is a significant height difference. So what happens, I can't even put this in, in this orientation, because the body hits this mount system here, so I have to invert it. Now I've chosen, rather than invert it like this, I'm going to invert it with the valve back. It'll be easier to access. I can still get to the rebound adjustment, but this puts it right at eye to eye and I couldn't go to a 200 millimeter on this so 190 would be the max however based on how much I already see this pivoted I can tell you right now I would not run a 190 like this now I measured the seat height I set this bike on the ground with the factory shock size the 165 and I measured the height from the ground to right at the top of my saddle can't see where I'm at but I'm at the top of my saddle and that was 38 inches so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure all this travel then I'm gonna put this on and I'm gonna put the bike back down on the ground and I'm gonna remeasure that and see how much it pumped the bike up or what it did at the saddle first though my super technical instrument squeezes right into the dropout 
holds in there good and firm. I'm pretty proud of this. So I have 190 millimeters from eye to eye. How am I going to get an accurate measure on that? Well, as you've seen, I have my Sharpie, my Bontrager box that I used for the last measurements, that 70 millimeters that I ended up equating to 90 to 100 millimeters. Well, the way I'm going to get this to move accurately, I have cut this zip tie to perfectly fit eye to eye. Between this, that's 190 millimeters. I know the shock has a stroke of 48, so I'm going to measure up 48 millimeters on this zip tie and mark it hmm, with my fancy measuring apparatus. I'm going to mark it with this, then I'm going to replace this, and I can pivot till I get to the line on my mark, and then I can measure the difference. On this side, I'm going to make a mark here and a mark at the end of the travel, and that will give me my rear travel not factoring in again there's a little bit of a sweeping motion that happens here and that's going to tilt the shock a bit so there's extra travel here this is just linear travel that i'm going to be measuring but let me mark it i'll pivot it measure and we'll find out what it is so there's 48 millimeters i'll know when this is on the other side the center of this eye that that'll be 48 millimeters of travel Okay, I'm going to try to do this fast so my Sharpie doesn't dry out. So here we go. All I have to do is tilt, 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 and right there. 48 millimeters. So I'll mark there. Okay, I'm going to double check this because when I measure the gap between this I'm getting the same thing that I got with the old shock, that 165 shock, which is just weird. Now, it could very well be that this pivot system, I need to watch this here. Let me move it and see if it keeps traveling. I mean, it keeps traveling. So I know I have a difference. Guess I'm going to have to remeasure this, redo it. Again, pseudoscience at work, it's not perfect. There is clearly an ongoing, hey, wait a minute. Now look at that. Let me back up. Okay, you see, I have to be way up here for this pivot system to fit this 190 shock. But watch what happens. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Okay, watch this. So I'm at the peak here. Actually, let me get it down to kind of the 165-ish range. So I've got 165, and I compress, and this comes up. And then I compress back down and it settles. And it settles roughly to here. Watch what happens when I pivot up. So I'm just going to kind of leave my hand here. Look at that. It comes back up. At this point right here, right at the peak of that 190, it's tilting back up. So I'm losing travel with a 190 shock. It's going to give me nothing more than a 165. So that means, for all practical purposes, it's worthless to put a 190 shock on this. The 165 is going to do just as much rear travel because of the way this horse blink pivot system works. So yeah, I'm kind of shocked. Heh, <laughs> shocked. No pun intended there. Oh wait, I could have brought up my electrical outlet for that joke. Hmm, wasted that opportunity. But yeah, there you go. So just FYI, more travel doesn't always mean more travel because of the way pivot systems work. This is going to bottom out on its travel, and it's actually going to pull this back up. Still, though, I am going to put this on the bike just because I want to get that seat to ground measurement and see how much that changes. See. How much more wonky it makes the travel, if any. It could be exactly the same because this is pitching back up at the peak apex here. So we'll see, just for giggles. Just to give you an idea of how poor of a fit this is, I didn't put the new spacers on because this is just for a temporary test. But I can't even reach the apex with just that little bitty bolt here, or end cap nut, on the end of my clamp. I mean, I'm right at it, but I've got to go that extra little bit. I can't even get that can't even get that travel just because of that. So, I'm actually going to have to take this off the stand 
just to get this pin on to see what the height is. I moved it back on the stand just a little bit so it's kind of rocking in the stand. just barely held up here, but I was able to pivot this back enough to get this pin in. And I mean, it is just barely... I can't go any further back or the shock contacts this base. So 190, definitely, definitely a no-go on the ledge, on this ledge medium frame. Not going to work out, but still, I can get my seat height now that I've got it roughly pinned in here. Here's an idea of just how well Project Ledge X1 Stage 2 is balanced. Look at that. Opened up, perfectly in the middle, perfectly balanced. Very nice. I always like to see that. And I'm not going to go too far over here because that front tire is sandwiched in the rear dropout of Project Ardor that I'll be finishing tonight. Stage 1 on that. So now to the ground seat height measurement. Okay, this surprised me. This surprised me a lot. This has been a very fruitful experiment. I, didn't I say 38 inches? I might have said 38 and a half, but at either way, it's almost 39. It's about an eighth of an inch away from 39, or said a quarter of an inch away from 39. So it kicked it up, possibly almost an inch definitely a half of an inch higher here at the saddle and that is not good for two reasons number one that means that the rear wheel is pitched downward but also the front end is kicked that way because of the way this pivot system works that's going to create a steeper head tube angle at the front and doing all kinds of weird things here at the back and making me higher which i guess one good thing pedal clearance would be higher because everything's pivoted up in the middle, but yeah, not something I would want. So a definite, definite, definite no-go for the 190 millimeter shock. Let me see if I can get a camera angle down here and show you just how close this is to this mounting system. Hey, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but I'm looking right down here between where this mount and the shock itself meets. Almost got my finger wedge there but you can see not any daylight can't see any of this gray concrete which you should be able to see in that gap very very close because it's right up against it so that would mean this really can't pivot even to get its well it's right at its full extension so technically it can and because it sweeps forward when it moves this could technically get all of its play but as we already know pitches up back here so that makes that useless so there you have it you know I don't make recommendations but I will recommend that if you are going to change your shock that you don't change it to a 190 in the rear stick with the 165 factory size because this is a definite no-go as far as I'm concerned taking the geometry and making it worse and not improving the travel, actually making that worse because of the way things move. Not good, not something I would do, so forego the 190 shock for a 165 or, you know, keep the factory shock. I'll tell you, that coil shock, where is that thing? This coil shock was 49 bucks, and it rode, well, starting to sag here, and it rode as well, pretty much, it's more tunable with the air shock, but this, this again, I'm going to use the phrase, this shocked me just how well it worked. This DNM, what is that? A DV22AR, 49 bucks for this. I was more impressed with the ride difference that it made over stock with this per dollar. If you wanted to go with an air shock, yes, note this, that's what I did. But again, I'm not recommending anything. I don't ever recommend anyone do what I do. I just kind of like to show off the fun that I'm having with these bikes. But I do know. That 190 is not a good choice. So now comment below. Let me know what you think about the pivot system here on the Mongoose Ledge. And if you would still try a 190 or if you're going to stick with a 165 like me, I'm curious. Or if you're even upgrading, I'm curious about that as well. So comment below. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative and let me know what you think. Are you surprised with the whole 190 versus 165 thing and how that worked out? Because I'll admit, and again, I'm going to use the cliche here, I was shocked that this shock didn't work. So there you go. 
Comment below with your opinions and if this helped you out. And I hope that you are subscribed. If you're not, please do so and make sure you have that notification bell active so you don't miss any videos like Stage 3. I have so much more money I'm sinking into this to make it even better. Because it's pretty good in Stage 2 in my opinion, but I'm going to make it even better, I think. It's a work in progress, but I will tell you that... One of the things, one of the big ticket items got delayed. It was supposed to come in today. Now they're saying next week. So I don't know. We'll see. You know how parts are right now. But thanks for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.